painting contractors, they're really good at painting, but they're not very good at business. There's a huge gap in knowledge and training and business acumen for painting contractors in North America, right? There's a ton of them that's super good at painting, painting, but they're just not very good at business. So I identified this, I put together like a version one of my program of a coaching and training program. Um, and I introduced it to the market. I'm like, Hey, guys, here's something I just kind of did some Facebook ads did a few organic posts about it on Facebook. And, and all of a sudden, I started getting sales calls and I started closing like everyone, everyone started enrolling in my program. And so I capped it at like 10 or 15. Initially, I'm like, I just want to get some guys through the program, see what happens. And literally what happened next was nothing short of incredible. Like I was even blown away by what happened. Welcome to the Painter Growth Podcast, where we help you scale your painting company in record time. Join us as we explore sales, marketing, hiring, finances, leadership, and more. Everything that you need to know to scale and grow your painting business. I hope you enjoy and subscribe. What's up, everyone? Mike Rickman here, founder of PainterGrowth.com. And y'all are listening to the Painter Growth Podcast. And you got me again, just a solo, just me, just a guy talking to his computer screen and hoping that some of you guys are going to listen and some of you guys are going to get some value out of this little chit chat that I put together for you today. So what are we going to talk about? Now, I actually want to share something that I get asked a lot. I know there's all the time people are saying, oh, I get asked this so much, blah, blah, blah. But actually, I do get asked this so much. And it is, if painting is such a good opportunity, why don't you still run a painting company? Why aren't you doing the things that you teach instead of just teaching it? Well, that's a really good question and one that I'm going to share with you today. And I'm going to break it down in kind of two different parts. The first part is why I'm why I shut down my painting business to begin with. And then the second part is why I'm not currently operating a painting business. OK, so we'll break it down into those two parts. So not going to be a super long episode, but we'll get into it. And I hope that you can get some value from it and get a little bit of insight into my mind and my world and, and how I kind of assess opportunities and, and things like that. Uh, now, first, why did I end up shutting down my painting business? So let me set the stage. The year was 2013. I was in uh, full swing production. We were producing um, over almost $200,000 per month. We had tons that we have I had, you know, was six or seven crews. I had, you know, 14 painters. We had some subs. We were doing residential work. We're doing commercial work, had a production manager. Um, I was still heading the sales, hadn't uh, delegated sales yet, but that was coming next. Things were cruising, right? And I was loving it. You know, I wasn't even that busy. I was probably working like 20, 25 hours a week. My production manager was crushing it. Um, I was never on site. Um, things were really smooth. And then I met a girl. Well, I'd actually met her, uh, you know, about six months earlier. But I'd been spending a lot of time with this girl. And... Anyway, things are going and things are going. And then all of a sudden she gets uh, a call from her work or has, has the opportunity to take her job or take a promotion in a different city. So she ended up moving out of the province. So if you, for Americans, out of state would be the equivalent. Uh, just to the state next door is about five and a half hours away by car. And I had a decision to make. She was starting to, you know, a career, a really awesome career. And I had a decision to make. Do I want to? run my painting business from afar or do i want to just or do i want to like break up with her or do i want to just uh and, and keep running my painting business um or do i want to just uh start over and and try my hand at something else so actually that wasn't my full full thought process but yeah, i'm gonna keep going for a second so what i ended up doing is we did like the the long-term long distance relationship for about three or four months and essentially do after doing that for a couple months, I'm like, hey, this girl, she's the one um, I have to be with her and I cannot run this business from afar. I'm going to be too spread. I don't want to spend so much time on the road going back and forth because inevitably, even if things are going smoothly now, that's going to be what it will be is I'll have to do a lot of time on the road. And that's just not something I was looking at doing. Didn't want to spend my life uh, driving back and forth. So um, I ended up three months after she moved, four months after she moved, ended up finishing my summer's worth of production and not book anymore and just closing up shop. I finished all the work, I shut it down, I sold my gear, most of it, um, and then I moved to Edmonton. Now, when I got to Edmonton, 
I didn't have a job. <laughs> so I started painting again. Um, and I got I didn't do residential there. I just got straight into commercial work. I did some um, but I was actually on the tools. I didn't really have too much of a network. I didn't it was just looking to make a little bit of money and, and kind of coast for a little bit. So I did some work with a couple of friends and did some commercial stuff, painted some box stores and some apartments and things like that. And that was fun and dandy. Um, but I was like, this is not something I want to do forever. Um, and so while I was doing this, I actually got a call from a friend from several years back who was starting a software and marketing company. And they had already got some uh, some momentum in this company, but they hadn't really gotten too much for sales yet, but they wanted to bring me on as their head of sales. So I'm like, okay, work online or work for work for an online company. Like this seems like kind of the direction that I want to go with my life and figure out how to work online. Like that sounds really cool. And they had a high growth company. There's a really cool co-founder that I was really interested in working with, who was like an ex uh, early Tesla executive um, from back in, you know, the, the early 2010s. And it's like, dang, this is, uh, this seems like I have a really good learning opportunity here. It's like, okay, I could like keep, you know, rebuild my painting company from scratch um, as a commercial painting business this time, which had already started doing. I had, a, you know, a crew or two going at this time. But um, I was like, you know what? I want to do this. So I decided to go in full time on this in the sales and marketing company, sorry, marketing and software company uh, and help them grow. And so over the next three years, I essentially helped them um, as their lead sales rep, go from a startup doing, I don't know what they were doing, probably 10,000 a month to just about a $10 million per year run rate within three years. And in that time, in that three years, I actually ended up being there about five years, revenue kind of leveled off, COVID, uh, COVID happened, there's a few years in there. Um, anyway, so then things ended up leveling off. So I got to see things grow really quickly, right? And throughout that journey, I got to see how an online company worked with how a how a product got put together, how an online product got put together so that it could be sold for thousands of dollars online, how so how you could like set something up to provide value to someone and create results and get people to take action um, over the Internet. Um, the team structure on what's required to build a seven and eight figure team online, what kind of customer success you need, what kind of sales, what kind of marketing, what kind of admin, what kind of operations. So we got to kind of see what the team structure looked like. I also got to see what really good leadership looked like. I had a, like that, I had that one um, co-founder there who was a very good leader and he got to, he empowered us and he helped us and he allowed us to grow and succeed and fail. And um, I got to see really great leadership. So in this online opportunity, I actually, I got a lot of skills that I just would never have been able to get if I was just running my painting business. Right. So, um, during COVID, I ended up starting a side hustle, right? I was like, you know what, this is really good. But like, let's do a side hustle. Um, so I, I dabbled with a few things. I did some like marketing, some Google ads for a couple clients, um, took a couple consulting courses. Um, actually, through this time, I probably took, I probably spent like 10 to 15 grand on like online courses to like learn how to do even more stuff online. Um, did some sales consulting, did some digital marketing. Um, and what I kind of ended up with um, during COVID when I quit that quit that job is that I kind of had this like digital marketing agency where we were doing marketing for painting contractors. So we were doing uh, we were doing Google ads and we were doing Facebook ads. And we got up to like 20, 25, 30 clients just doing just doing Facebook marketing and Google marketing. And and that was pretty cool. I got like a full time salary. I was able to make a full time salary out of this as what was a side hustle went full time. Um, and that was pretty cool, except as I was doing that for longer as a marketing agency going for longer and longer working with painters, um, I, I got to a point where clients would cancel about as fast as I could bring new ones on. I got some team brought in kind of systems. So I was like pretty much out of fulfillment and like I was still doing sales and marketing and stuff, but clients were kind of churning out as fast as I could bring them on. And I was like, you know what? Kind of had this realization that I'm never going to be able to scale a business if I can't provide a, a, a revolutionary life changing product. Uh, and if I can't provide a revolutionary life changing product, like what am I really doing? Why am I trying to create like incremental benefits in a marketplace like this? If I can't keep clients, if I can't show them the value that I'm providing them. So um, in October 2021, I read a book by Alex Ramosi called Hundred Million Dollar Offers. And after reading that book, I realized that, you know what? marketing isn't the key to, to changing lives. Uh, coaching is coaching, pay, coaching, business education, 
and training and development because painting contractors, they're really good at painting, but they're not very good at business. There's a huge gap in knowledge and training and business acumen for painting contractors in North America, right? There's a ton of them that's super good at painting, painting, but they're just not very good at business. So I identified this, I put together like a version one of my program of a coaching and training program. Um, and I introduced it to the market. I'm like, Hey guys, here's something. I just kind of did some Facebook ads, did a few organic posts about it on Facebook. And, and all of a sudden I started getting sales calls and I started closing like everyone, everyone started enrolling in my program. And so I capped it at like 10 or 15 initially. I'm like, I just want to get some guys through the program, see what happens. And literally what happened next was nothing short of incredible. Like I was even blown away by what happened because every single person in this first cohort that came into the program saw insane results immediately because we were teaching them how to sell. We're teaching them how to manage their schedule. We're teaching them how to get leads on their own. We're teaching them how to scale up production with recruiting. Every single person was able to make significantly more money by the end of three months. And I was like, dang, this is not a result I could normally get through just providing someone leads or doing Facebook marketing to them, right? Like, okay, you, you give someone leads, like they're probably not going to close them or not call them enough or whatever. There's holes in the process. But if we can teach them, like find a motivated painting contractor and teach them how to run their business properly. And all of a sudden they're making five times more money within 90 days. Like that's transformative. And so number one, like we found product market fit because, uh, people were buying it and they were getting great results. And then they started referring their friends. And so that was really cool. So I took everything we learned and we created a second version of it. And in this one, we called it the painter growth blueprints. We added a bunch of things, brought on some team, made it a lot more built out and we started enrolling again. And again, like people started picking it up and joining and, and seeing great results. And it was just like the, the, the transformative journey that people are having going through our training was just like nothing like I had ever experienced before. Because now a word that I want to introduce here that you guys, of course, know, but it's a very important word for me is impact, right? With painting, and this is kind of going into the second part of what I wanted to talk about today, which is why am I, if painting is such a good vehicle, why don't I just go back into it? So why did I get out and then why aren't I back into it? It's because it, it's impact and there's nothing wrong with running a painting business, right? There's, there's tons of, of value and demand and need, pride in running a great painting company. You can transform homes, you can provide great service, you can make homeowners very happy, you can make business owners very happy, you can provide value to the marketplace, right? But what, what I wasn't getting from that is the ability to make impact on people. And so impact now for me looks like taking someone who doesn't make any money, teaching them how to make their first 100,000 or teach them how to make a quarter million dollars a year or provide a better life for their families and doing this at scale, doing this 50 times, 100 times, 500. We've had now 560 clients come into our training. And most of them, of course, not everyone, but most of them have seen incredible results. So for us now to look at like long term, the impact that I'm able to create in communities, for our clients, for their families, uh, for the entire painting industry, which is our you know long term goal is to help 10,000 painting contractors lift up their economic situations by teaching them the essential business skills that they never knew, we now have real opportunity to make a difference in the painting industry, in, like I said, their communities, in the world. If we're helping, if we're helping 10,000 individual businesses over the next 10 years, get out of their tough economic situation, learn how to run a business, learn how to manage their financials, learn how to save, learn how to provide better lives for their family. So we have 10,000 painting contractors, say each one has a family of four, that's 40,000 people, right? And kind of ran the math If we're able to help them make it, you know, do an extra $30,000 per month of sales. That's that equates to about $3.6 billion in value creation for the economy, just from this model, right? Not something that one painting company can do. And even if one painting company you know, with a thousand franchises around North America can create that kind of value, the life transforming value that we can create through changing people's economic situations. Someone comes to us, right? One of our programs is $5,000, right? We have some payment plans and things like that. So what they come to us, like, Mike, here's $5,000. I just sold my 401k. Please help me, right? 
I don't take that responsibility lightly. It's not, oh, great, you another 5,000 added to the pile. Like, it's not like that at all. It's like, okay, you're trusting me with a significant portion of your life savings because you've seen the results that we're able to create. You know that we help people in your exact situation lift out of their tough economic situations so that they can provide better lives for their family, so that you know how to get more jobs, sell them for higher prices, employ more painters in your area, reduce unemployment rate, provide jo good job opportunities for these painters, um, take home more money so you can take your family on vac vacation, buy a nicer house and a nicer car and reinvest in your community and contribute instead of just scraping by job to job, underbidding, being stressed all the time, never adding to your savings. So if we can help 10,000 more people do that over the next 10 years, like just think of the impact that me and my team are able to create versus if we were to take all of that energy, all of that focus, all of that drive and just create a painting company. Like I said, there's nothing wrong in running a painting company. It's, it's great work. Right. But with my skill set, I have the ability to truly make a difference, to make an, a significant impact in the country, in the economy, in the world, in the industry. And I'm going to do that. And I do get a lot of people asking me why I'm not painting anymore. Why I don't still run a painting company if it's such a good vehicle, if I know how to do it so well. well I do know how to do it so well. And even more than that, <laughs> I'm better at actually now teaching people how to do it and coaching them to be better and to maximize their opportunity and to generate more leads and to book more jobs and to manage the jobs and add crews and get off the tools and manage their cash flow and look at their expenses and make more money without as much stress so they can provide better lives for their family. That's what I do. That's what I'm passionate about. That's where my impact is uh, coming from. So if you have any questions, if you want to chat with me directly about this, shoot me an email, mike at painterbrowth.com. Happy to, happy to, to chat with you. Um, but yeah, that's what, that's what I'm about. Um, I'll leave it there. I hope you guys found that valuable. Hopefully I answered a few questions that you were thinking about. Uh, maybe you weren't thinking about it and I just answered the questions anyway. Uh, with that being said, hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the painter growth podcast. If you want to grow your painting business, go to www.paintergrowth.com or click on the top link in the description. Talk soon.